Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna take a look at another example where we apply the method of variation of parameters to solve this non-homogeneous ODE. We have our usual steps over here. From our first problem, you know what to do. Very easy to find a particular solution. You just have to come up with what u1 and u2 of x are. Those factors multiplying y1 and y2 in this general form for the particular solution. And this is nice because we have two simple formulas for u1 and u2 of x as integrals. So let's get right to it. Step one, we're gonna find the complementary solution. So we solve the homogeneous ODE, where the right-hand side is zero. You've probably solved this one a lot, or one that's very similar. This converts to the characteristic equation, and again, be careful, it's r squared plus your y does not give you a factor of r. Only y prime and y double prime give you factors of r or r squared. So here, converting, you'll get r squared plus one, and we can easily solve that Subtract one and then take a square root. So we get as our characteristic roots, plus or minus i. You can write this in the form of a complex number. So we have our real part as zero and our imaginary part as one. In this case, when the real part is zero, e to the ax, e to the zero is just one, so you get as your complementary solution here, a linear combination of sine of bx, sine of one x, or just sine of x, and then you have your similar cosine term. All right, that should go very quick. What we wanna identify to make use of your integral formulas here, we need what our y1 and our y2 are, our two linearly independent solutions, but that's simple here, it's gonna be sine and cosine. So let's say y1 is sine of x and y2 is cosine of x. It's certainly okay if you switch the order of addition and have your labeling here different. Maybe you have y2 as cosine and y1 as sine, but as long as you're consistent all the way through, you'll end up with the same particular solution, regardless of the labeling. All right, as soon as you have y1 and y2, I always like to immediately calculate the Ronskian, since we're gonna need that in the denominators of our integral formulas. And this one should be pretty straightforward. Set this up as a simple two by two determinant. We'll put sine and cosine in the top row. Their derivatives go in the bottom row, cosine of x and negative sine of x. And if we calculate this two by two determinant, we'll get negative sine squared. And then subtract this diagonal minus cosine squared If you want, you can factor out a negative, or maybe you see it already, by using your basic Pythagorean identity, the wrong scheme here works out to negative one. The only other ingredient that we need to make use of your formulas here is the non-zero right-hand side, which g of x here, that is cotangent of x. All right, so we have our complementary solution. We have y1 and y2. We have the Ronskian, which is negative one, and we have g of x. Now we're just gonna plug it all in to these two formulas. Now we're ready to smash those integrals. Let's evaluate the integral for u1 of x first. So we're gonna start, as always, just plug everything in. And the formula says we get negative y2, negative cosine of x, times g of x, 
and then divide it by your Ronskian, and we evaluate that integral. Fortunately, the negatives cancel out, but we're left with this weird trig integral, cosine times cotangent, and thinking back to your Calc 2 course, that doesn't seem to fit any of the nice cases for trigonometric integrals. Now, there's a nice little trick that works for quite a lot of the weird trig integrals. Just write everything in terms of sine and cosine. So let's go ahead and do that here. The negatives cancel. You have cosine of x. And we're going to think of cotangent of x. That's the reciprocal of tangent. Tangent is sine divided by cosine, which means cotangent should be cosine divided by sine. And unfortunately, nothing cancels out. All right, what can we do? At least I can multiply the numerators here. And I can write this as cosine squared divided by sine of x. Unfortunately, the factors are in the wrong spots to make use of a simple u substitution, or at least a simple one that maybe I'm not thinking of. So we'll forget about that. But the clue here, we have cosine squared. Squared trig functions are begging us to apply the Pythagorean identities to. So let me rewrite cosine squared as one minus sine squared. And notice, if I do that, sine squared divided by sine, I can cancel a factor out. So let me go ahead and write this as the integral of, in the numerator, one minus sine squared. We're dividing by sine of x. And I'm going to divide sine, your denominator, into each term in the numerator. All right, and if you think about basic trig functions, going all the way back to when you first learned about them, like in your pre-calculus course, one over sine of x, that is cosecant of x. And sine squared divided by sine is just sine of x. All right, and depending on how well you know your basic antiderivatives, the antiderivative for cosecant of x is very much like the antiderivative for secant of x. But the co-functions have a negative. Your antiderivative here for cosecant x is negative. Natural log of cosecant x plus cotangent x. That's a good one to just memorize your antiderivatives for secant and cosecant. They come out to be these weird antiderivatives with natural logs in them. And then notice you have negative sine of x. Your antiderivative for sine, that would be negative cosine, which cancels the negative. So we get plus cosine of x. All right, that completes the work for u1 of x. Now we just need to go through the work for u2 of x, which is fortunately much simpler. So again, we're gonna plug everything in. Just be careful, there's no negative here. So your integral for u2 says you have y1 sine of x times g of x non-zero right-hand side is cotangent x. We divide by the Ronskian, and we integrate that. Now, this one is going to be nice. If we think of cotangent as cosine divided by sine, now we can get a sine of x to cancel out. So let's rewrite cotangent as cosine of x divided by sine of x, 
you can cancel the sine of x terms out, we're left with the simple antiderivative of negative cosine of x. And always think about your basic antiderivatives, forget the negative, your antiderivative for cosine, that would be sine. I always do a quick check in my head by calculating derivatives. So this antiderivative, this should come out to negative sine of x. All right, and worth mentioning, notice I'm leaving the plus c's off since we account for constants in our complementary solution with c1 and c2. So you don't need to include your integration constants here in u1 or u2. All right, so we have our two functions, u1 and u2, and we can plug it all in and get a nice expression for the particular solution. We're basically done, but Let's go ahead and see if we can get a simplified form for the particular solution. We're gonna plug everything in. We have u1, we have u2, and we have y1 and y2. We now can get our particular solution. And the general formula says we take u1 of x and multiply it by y1. So negative natural log of cosecant x plus cotangent x plus cosine of x. And that all multiplies y1, which is sine of x. And then we add to that u2, but u2 is negative, so I'll write that as minus sine of x. And then that multiplies y2, which is cosine of x. All right, and if you can see in this expression, this big mess, if I distribute, I'm gonna have a cosine times sine term, which I can cancel with here. So it looks like if you distribute, what you're left with is negative. I'm gonna put the sine of x factor in front of the natural log. So negative sine of x times natural log of cosecant x. plus cotangent x. Distribute here, you'll get cosine times sine, but that subtracts with this term minus sine times cosine. So we do get a somewhat nice, simple looking expression for the particular solution. Our full solution is always the complementary solution plus the particular solution. So as always, write this down. Full solution, complementary solution, C1 times sine of x plus C2 times cosine of x. And then we add to that our particular solution. But since it's negative, we write that as minus sine of x times natural log of cosecant x plus cotangent x. Now, if you have initial conditions, like we mentioned with the method of undetermined coefficients, once you have your full solution, yc plus yp, this is where you would apply your initial conditions. Now, your initial conditions here probably won't work out to be nice numbers since you have combinations of trig functions and natural logs, but if you did have initial conditions, you would apply them to your full solution now. All right, hopefully you're starting to see that the method of variation parameters is actually kind of nice. A lot of the times the integral formulas give you integrals that really aren't too bad. Hope you enjoyed the content. I hope you're learning a lot. If you are, support the channel, like and subscribe.